What's going on guys? Hope you're all doing well. Today I'm coming at you with another retro repaint. We're going to be taking on the Mattel Battle Damage Packy and turning it into the original uh, black and red Kenner Packy Cephalosaurus. Now you might be rushing to the comments to be like, dude, you should have painted the Legacy Packy. And the uh, fact of the matter is the Legacy Packy is non-existent here in my area. Uh, it disappeared last Christmas and I haven't seen it since, but the Battle Damage Packy is a peg warmer, so this is the one that's going to be getting the retro repaint. Uh, on down the line, I'll probably do another retro repaint on the new uh, Dino Rivals Packy that's coming out, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So we're going to start off priming this Packy with this nice German red brown color. Uh, this is a surface primer and it's going to be the base color that I'm going to be building on with this packy uh, so any sort of um, spiced berry acrylic paint would probably work if you're not going to be using an airbrush and you're just looking for uh, your regular craft paint uh, go for a nice dark red brown color and then um, you can kind of build up to a brighter red after you get that all on so now here I'm taking some Createx red mixing it into the pot of the German red brown that I have to try and match that red just a little bit more um, I want to make it a bit brighter I don't want it to be super fluorescent, you know, bright red, but I want it to be a little bit more um, matching with that color that's on the original packy. So uh, this is just going to get a couple of light coats over that uh, German red brown that I've got going on here. And uh, we'll try to match that as best as I possibly can. That's looking good. So now we're going to move on to the belly. Now the belly is going to be a mix of two different colors. We're going in with some off ivory white mixed with a little bit of the light gray. I'm going to make it all into a um, airbrush type consistency so I can spray it through my airbrush like this. And I'm just going to apply it on the belly. Super, super careful. Try not to get too much overspray, but we want to keep that natural kind of blend going, you know. So, uh, yeah, I'm just applying a really light, uh, thin coat on that stomach and kind of fading it up into that red. Super easy. All right, so next up here, we're going to go after this yellow dome. I've got some nice bright yellow in my airbrush here. Now, this is going to be too bright, but I'm going to go back over it after I get this on with some yellow ochre just to darken that yellow up a little bit. I'm going to uh, wrap it up in a little toasty blanket here to protect it from yellow overspray and attack that dome. Okay, so now I'm just mixing the yellow ochre right in with that yellow. I'm not worried about cleaning my pot out here. I want the colors to marry really well together. And I'm going to go over it with that yellow ochre to darken it up a tad bit. Like so. Now I'm leaving the very center of the dome bright yellow just to kind of give it a cool little fade effect on it. That way it's not just one solid color. But we're trying to, you know, stick to the original colors as much as possible. But, you know, sometimes we have to make things look really cool, and we always do the rule of cool, guys. Next up here, I'm going to uh, outline the eyeball area with just a little bit of black acrylic, and then I'm going to go back in afterwards with the airbrush, and I'm going to make this eye patch a little bit bigger. Uh, the heads, you know, are obviously shaped differently, so it's kind of hard to make it look exactly like it, but... Um I'm going to try my hardest to uh, do what I can do with the different sculpts here. Now we're going in with some thin down black acrylic paint. This is just matte black. Uh, put it on a little uh, palette, add a little couple drops of water to help with flow because that's how we get these stripes looking all thin and, you know, sharp looking. Uh, keep that paint really thin when you're doing it. Thin enough to where you have control. You don't want it to be wash like a, you don't want a wash thin. You want it to be just thin enough where you get nice control with the tip of that uh, little brush. And we're just basically going in and drawing some uh, some little black stripes. Nothing fancy. Okay, hold your breath time. We got a red eyeball coming in, and I'm just going to do a little red dot. And I'm going to come back and clean this up later once after I do the black airbrush, because I'll probably get some overspray on it. But uh, just to give you the general idea of what's going on, here we go. We got some black claws happening on these uh, little feet here. And the claws on the Kenner one are also painted black. Surprisingly, sometimes the claws just aren't painted at all. But this one has the claws on the feet and the hands painted black. So this is just the same color black that I use on the black stripes along its back. Okay, going in with the airbrush here to finish this thing up. And uh, this is basically just uh, me with a very low, low pressure 
going in and uh, trying to match that black up in there. And then uh, we're going to take some satin varnish to finish this retro repaint off. We want to give it that kind of factory shine sheen, but we don't want it to be glossy. We don't want it to be matte. We want something in between that Goldilocks zone. And that's where that satin varnish comes in handy to make these things kind of look a little bit more factory. So uh, this was a very fun and easy retro repaint to do. I hope you guys definitely give it a shot. And if you do, remember to use that hashtag retro repaints over on Instagram and tag me in all of your photos. I love seeing the content you guys are pumping out there. It makes my heart happy. For more Jurassic Park related content, you guys know where to find me. Links will be in the description box below. You guys take care and I'll see you in the next video.